Hey friends, the Inquisitive Farm Wife here, and I am so excited. It is totally tomato, tomato Tuesday. <laughs> I love thematic things. And I have a group of friends who I chitty chat with pretty often, and we've decided that it would be super fun to just bring you guys some recipes each month. And we chose tomatoes this month. And many of us like the Tomato Tuesday since it's the second Tuesday of the month this time. We're gonna bring you two tomato recipes each. Well, it's an option, they don't have to. But anyway, I'm so excited that myself, Renee over at Pike Creek Farm, Michelle at Big Valley Living, and Leanne at the Mennonite Farmhouse will be bringing you videos today. So be watching for those if you haven't already seen them. And let's get started on my first recipe, breaded tomatoes. I searched everywhere trying to find a recipe. My grandma used to make this. I don't even know how she made it, but I've been craving it lately. I don't know why. I just, I don't know, I'm feeling nostalgic or something. I've lost my cookbooks that might possibly have the recipe. So I got to searching online and I found another YouTube channel who actually I got the recipe from and their channel name is Come Sit at My Table and they have breaded tomatoes from the restaurant Claudia Sanders Dinner House. So I'll put their video down below so that you can have exact measurements and follow the directions exactly and hear the story how they got that recipe. But for now, we're gonna give it a try and see if it's just like the one my grandma used to make. Now the recipe called for canned diced tomatoes, which, you know, that's perfect. Go ahead and use those if that's what you have available. I can understand why a restaurant would do that, but I am going to be using garden fresh tomatoes from my mama's garden. She has blessed me with some more tomatoes. I'm so excited. And all I'm doing here, folks, is I'm peeling the tomatoes, and then here in a bit, we're gonna go ahead and dice them. I wanna take that core out. Many of us don't even think about peeling tomatoes anymore, but I can guarantee that is something that our grandmas did. So I'm gonna sit here, and I'm gonna take the time, and I remember my grandma, how she would just kinda of take her thumb, and take her knife, and just peel it back. Okay, we'll kinda of cut that in half. transfer these tomatoes into a bowl because they're just going to get more and more juicy. I want about a half a cup of onions and this was kind of a smaller onion so I'm going to go ahead and cut the whole onion and I just want to kind of make it in a nice bite-sized piece. I got this measuring bowl here. It's, it's about a three-quarter cup. I think the half cup marks about here. So I guessed it pretty close. You know, the way grandma used to cook was never precise. So we've got about three quarters of a cup here. That's close enough for me. A few other ingredients you're gonna need is a half a cup of oil, half a cup of sugar, two tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of flour. I don't think it really matters what kind of oil you use. Originally, I thought olive oil goes really well with tomatoes, but I don't ever remember grandma cooking with that. So it's vegetable oil today. And finally, some bread. This is some potato wheat bread that I made yesterday. We need three slices of bread. This is a nice heavy bread. It had milk and eggs and butter in it and the potato flakes were just something that made it nice and sturdy. So now what I need to do, throw it in the toaster. Here we go. Now it's got a nice toast to it. Throw this other one in. And what you wanna do is just cube up your bread. About 
you know, I don't know, what is that, a half inch piece or something? You don't want to go too small because then it just completely goes to mush. So now that we have all of our ingredients prepped and ready, I'll meet you all over at the stovetop so we can put this together. Let's turn on the heat to about a medium. Turn it down. Then I'm going to throw in this butter, get it to melting. And I'll throw in the onions, and we want to get these, oh, we want to try to get them soft, you know, clear and translucent. Just be careful that your stove doesn't get too hot. We're going to add in our flour, and we're going to coat these onions, and we're going to cook this. It suggests two minutes. Basically what you've got to do is you've got to cook off that flour taste. Flour in the raw state is not very tasty. So you've got to cook that off before you go on to the next step. Use the tomatoes. I know, crazy enough, we're going to add that oil in made me nervous too, but I'm going to follow the recipe. And your sugar, which I do remember grandma's being kind of sweet. I don't remember the onions. We're going to add salt. And we're going to add pepper. My husband likes lots of pepper. Me, not so much, so I kind of try to go right down the middle of the lane. And we're going to cook this. Oh, it's going to take a couple minutes. We want it to get thick, like you know, we're just basically making a tomato gravy here. You can see it is starting to kind of thicken up. Right now we are nice and we have a thick sauce here. So we can add in bread cubes. I'm going to go ahead and turn off that heat. And I'm just going to kind of let that bread soak up all this delicious tomato sauce. There's still a few chunks of tomato, some bread chunks, a little bit of onion chunks. I'm just gonna put the lid on and I'm gonna let that sit for just a minute or two. Oh yeah, that looks good. Go ahead and dish some of this up. Let me give it a quick taste test. I have got some zucchini over there frying. The meatloaf is finishing up in the oven, but I've got to do a taste test. I got to see if this is like I remember it as a kid. Oh, it smells so good. This went past my expectations. This is as good, if not better than I remember. This is a recipe to keep, friends. Give it a try. I think you'll like it. Do you have memories of a dish like this? I think it's one that's been around for many years. Okay, friends, I am back with my second tomato recipe. I've been out working today. I'm a hot mess express, but we still gotta get dinner on the table, right? So let's get started with our second tomato recipe. How many times do you get cherry tomatoes at the store, but you never finish the package? Or maybe you grew your own this year and it was a really good year and you had so many. And everybody says, throw them in the freezer. Okay, I did that. They're frozen, now what? Well, thanks to some ideas from my good friends and a little research on the internet, I found that roasting them is about the best way and they were, you could put them in and make a sauce with them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let these kind of warm up a little bit. I'm gonna go preheat the oven to 400 degrees. I have a pot of water boiling over on the stove top. We're gonna add some pasta to this dish. I went ahead and grabbed myself some olive oil and some seasonings. And I have a half an onion in the fridge and I thought I'd go ahead and put this into roast too. Cut that right in half. Turn it on its side here. 
and we're going to kind of go up to the edge and I'm going to work my way around the onion and we're just making slits here. Now all we have to do is give it a few slices this way. Whoop. And we've got diced onion. Onion just kind of makes everything better in my opinion. Garlic and onion. Speaking of garlic, got a couple of cloves over here. Stick it in this little tool here. Peel off those skins. That was, this thing sure makes quick work of that. Got this garlic slicer. So I put one on each side. And this will just slice the garlic right over the top. Isn't that nifty? I love this thing. Sometimes you just want pressed pieces and sometimes you just want little slivers and see there you go I on some olive oil and I was just gonna do basil but I found that I have some Italian seasoning and it has oregano marjoram thyme basil rosemary and sage I thought that sounded like a good combination so instead of just basil we're gonna use this we like seasoning. A little salt, pepper, and now with my clean hands, I'm just gonna dig in and just mix this up. These are gonna bake in the oven probably about 30 minutes. And while I do that, we're gonna make a sauce. The water has come to a boil. I was digging in the cabinet. I found these mushroom tortellini and I thought, ooh, that sounds delicious. So let's go ahead and get this opened and in the pot. And I always add a little bit of salt. Oop. And a splash of olive oil when I boil my pasta for eight minutes for al dente. And then, I'm gonna go ahead and start this white sauce. It's really simple to do. You just need a few tablespoons of butter. You just let that heat up. Once your butter is melted, you wanna add in a couple tablespoons of flour. Now remember, you want to cook your flour. This is almost too big of a pan here. So it should cook fairly quickly. About a cup and a half, two cups of fresh milk that I just got from the cow. This is basically the base to the cream sauce. We'll add some salt to flavor. You know, a cream... A sauce where you start with just unsalted butter and flour is pretty bland. So you want to be generous. And then you can use white pepper if you want, but I'm just going to add in regular pepper. I don't mind those flecks. And we're going to kind of let this thicken. I stir constantly because... It's such a big pan for such a small amount. I want to not let it scorch. Our sauce has thickened. So now I'm going to add some heavy cream. And that's it. That's all there is to this sauce. You can add seasonings to taste. Maybe you'd like to add a little garlic. But since we have garlic and onion in our tomatoes, I don't think we need it. So I'm gonna put the lid on this and set it aside. Turn off the heat. And I've got this handy little bowl. It's insulated. And I got it years ago from Tupperware. So I don't even know if it's anything they sell anymore. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna transfer my cooked tortellini 
to this insulated bowl. Put a little olive oil on this to help that pasta from sticking. I'm going to give this a quick toss. It also has a double insulated lid. And we're going to set this aside to stay warm while we wait on our tomatoes to finish roasting. Oh, wow, guys. Ooh, that turned out beautiful, didn't it? Oh, my goodness. The house smells amazing. Toss this a little bit. Oh, yum. Oh, I wish you guys could smell just how amazing this is. Now it's time to build our plate. Start with our pasta. Layer on some cream sauce. I'm going to put on some of these roasted tomatoes and onion. Oh. Top with some Parmesan cheese. Now to me, this looks like a tasty meal. You could definitely choose to just put your tomatoes right in your sauce. And it's still very much a beautiful sauce. You also can put your pasta, toss it, And serve it just like this or you can add your cheese to the pot and mix it right in too. I promise no matter how you fix it your family will eat it. Now it's time for a taste test. I want to get a little of everything. Get some tomato, get some cheese, that onion, a lot of sauce. Let's get us a good bite with everything on it. Mmm. Mmm. You can't go wrong with a white sauce and tomatoes. I hope you guys give this a try. Thanks for coming along with me today and the other day, my tomato Tuesday videos and I sure hope that you go visit my friends and see what delicious recipes they come up with. See you next time friends. Bye for now. Uh, Mamma mia, yes please.